Hello, there is Fimpasabu Creations and its introduction tutorial for Ragdoll Animator 2. We will focus on preparing Ragdoll Humanoid Rig, setting up bone chains, adjusting colliders physics and covering few essential things. Yeah, here we go! Let's add character on the scene and I will use the orc model made by Blink, add Ragdoll Animator and let's use Auto Finding option here. It gives us dialog that it generated Ragdoll Rig, but we still need to do a few adjustments. And now you see that there are new things in the inspector window. Auto Rig added arms, legs and core chains, found the bone references. Now when you click on the selected bone chain, you will see preview of the whole rig. So you can quickly verify if everything is right. Now when we go to Collider's bookmark, you can preview the colliders for each bone. And as you notice, they are pretty thin, that's because auto algorithm is not detecting model thickness, so we will adjust it manually later. Ok, let's go back to core, setup, and let me explain what is going on here. You probably wonder what's up with these grey fields, because when you go to the legs, arms, you don't see them. These are basically bones which are skipped in the ragdoll setup. You see that from spine it goes straight to the head, but when we add all of the lacking bones, you see true skeleton of this model. But Ragdoll Animator is supporting skipping bones, so you don't need to add all of them, because when you have many bones, you need to adjust each collider, each physics settings to make it work stable, plus physics need to calculate more stuff, so you can always do a simplified physical rig if you don't need so much precision in animation matching with physics. It's up to your needs. You can even go with legs, like including just two bones, so it's even simpler. The same with arms, if you don't need hand physics. But in reverse you can go with hands plus shoulders, to improve the animation matching, but then you need to remember about adjusting both colliders and physics settings of the shoulders to make everything work correctly. Ok, I will reset the settings and we can focus on colliders adjustments. And there you see all bones from the setup bookmark, other different settings. With this slider you can adjust all chain collider size for a quick adjustment. There you can change type of a collider for each bone. You have few options there, but I will leave them as they are. And you can display more settings by expanding each collider. Expanding is also switching scene focus, so you can use handles to tweak colliders, like here, with a position, or switch to the scale mode. By default colliders are displayed as meshes, so you can see clearly where it overlaps model, where not. To tweak you can also use the inspector window values, you can switch to the sliders mode if it's more comfortable to work this way. If slider value is not big enough you can always change max value here, so you can find the best workflow for you. I recommend setting size of the colliders to be a bit bigger than the mesh to avoid overlapping between meshes. And here on the bottom you can switch how colliders are displayed. Drawing mesh is most practical way, but sometimes wireframe will be helpful. And drawing 2D shape can also be helpful in some cases. Ok, so let me adjust colliders in a while. To switch between editing colliders in a scene view, you can just click on a circle and there you go. Ok, base tweaks are done. And now if you want to edit multiple colliders and you don't want to display it like this, you can click on this solo button and it will hide all if collider was selected, but if not it's just jumping between them. There is also another way how to display settings, you can hit on the name, then it will be displayed just in one place in the inspector window. So depending how many bones you need to edit, sometimes it will be better approach. And I have also another tip. You can hit right mouse button on the green collider icon and you will find here a few more options, which can be really helpful when you are setting up for example tails with multiple bones like 20 or more. Now let's check how the setup reacts with uh, physics. 
and it's okay, but it lacks collision here. And to solve this, we will use multiple colliders for a single bone. Hit this button to add extra collider, and we will adjust it with the handles. Alright, now let's add another one. Okay, it's ready, let's test it. It works. The body is reacting a bit too much, but we will focus on this aspect in other tutorials. Great, now let's do quick adjustments for the other limbs, like for the arm. They are pretty thin, so let's select it and adjust actually with a slider. Now forearm and hand, it uses box collider, so let's do it this way. A bit fatter. Okay. Now let's hit this utility button, copy settings, paste symmetrical, and our hand is ready. Now let's switch to the legs. Select it, adjust radius, and here we will use this button, which applies settings to found symmetrical bone. When you hit it with right mouse button, you will select the symmetrical bone. So you can apply different workflows when you do this ragdoll setup. And final adjustment for the feet. And there we have it. Let's quick test it. Okay, everything works properly. Now let's focus on the physics settings. There you can limit how bones can be rotated to prevent like weird bone rotations, which are unnatural. And Ragdoll Animator by default is applying these limits only when you switch to Fallen mode. When you are in Standing mode, using more force on the bones to rotate towards your desired plate animation pose, the limits are not used. So you will not see effects of these settings when you use Standing mode. Let's start with arms. Select first bone. And there you see simulation, how bone will be allowed to rotate. Main axis can use min max range for the rotation range, but the other axis can use just one value for this. And you should focus on adjusting each axis individually, just by switching using this button. When you want to check it more precisely, you can click on this button, and you clearly see what's going to happen with the bone rotation. So let's use a slider to tweak the range. Let's check max value, and now it needs to be lower, somewhere around there. Let's check second range. And it do need to be smaller. Yeah. Another axis. It looks okay. And this one. Ah, it needs to be a bit smaller. Let's tweak it. And here on the bottom you can apply like multiplayer for all bones in the chain. When you feel you set them too low or too big, you can quickly adjust it. Okay, now forearm. It seems to be okay. Let's check it on a preview. I will give it a bit... Oh, not this way. It shouldn't be rotated in this direction. But in this. Yeah. Let's check other axis. Hmm, let's see how it would look like. Ah, no. 10 is okay. And this one. Yeah, it would look weird. 50 is okay. And of course you can always change the axis, so you can tweak it in any way you want, or fix it if automatic rig went somewhere wrong. But with this model it actually did a good job. Take a look on the hand. It rotates properly enough. Now let's copy this physics settings and paste to the other arm. So now let's focus on the leg and let me do the same thing quickly. And now the last thing, physics settings for the core. The first core bone is Anko. It's handled differently than the other bones. And limits are not applied for it, unless you switch anchor bone limiting in the motion settings. So let's skip it and start with spine bone. Since we used just one bone for the whole spine, 
it is allowed to rotate in a pretty big range and it seems to be okay. Now let's go for the head and it seems in the first look that it's okay but I prefer more control over the up down rotation of the head so it will be Z axis so let's change this to Z and now we can give better precision for the head rotation so let's go around this okay minus 55 to 17 okay that will be more correct yeah and a bit lower there okay another extra tip there you have this button which displays extra settings you can also switch it there so if you need very specific settings for a single bone you can use these values to do it probably in most cases you will not need this but you can find it useful and last thing to cover in this tutorial is just mass settings for the each bone it is actually most important parameter it defines how heavy is each bone so it can change physical animation a lot ragdoll animator is using reference mass value and assigning it on the bones using persons. Thanks to that, you can assign anatomically correct values. Hit on the draw mass indicators button to see gizmos on a scene, which can be really helpful when working with that. You can treat the reference mass value as target mass of a whole character, but when you apply persons to the bones, you can always exceed the 100% total body mass value. Auto setup is trying to match the anatomical values, but it's not perfect. But sometimes you don't even want to make it anatomically correct, so you can always play with it. Yeah, and that's all for the base setup for the Ragdoll Animator Zoo. Remember that changing the collider settings in a construct or the mass settings are also applied during play mode, so you can get active preview of everything you adjust. Alright, that's all for this tutorial. And the next one we will cover other aspects of the Ragdoll Animator too. I hope this video was helpful for you. Leave a like, hit subscribe for more. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.